After all this time, Cloud Retainer will finally be available. How's it going everyone? This is K. Let's go over Xi'an Yun's abilities, strengths, and weaknesses. I'll also break down the other 5 stars to see who you should prioritize pulling for on the 4.4 banners. Xi'an Yun is going to be a niche support. This is because she specializes in plunge damage for allies. She's an animal catalyst user, but you won't really use her NAs. Using her elemental skill allows Xi'an Yun to triple jump into the air and deal a specialized plunge damage called Drift Cloud wave. You can only do this once per skill use, and the damage and AoE of the Drift Cloud will increase based on how many jumps you did prior before attacking. Now you don't always have to use all three jumps, as it will make rotations a bit longer, but the main purpose of her skill is to generate particles and to activate her A1. Her elemental burst is Xi'an Yun's biggest contribution for the team, it will first deal animal damage and heal all allies, scaling with her attack. Afterwards, she'll summon a Star Waker, a little mechanical bird that will follow your active character around for 16 seconds. During this time, it'll heal your party's health at intervals, scaling off of her attack. The key part of her burst are the 8 stacks it provides, which increases the on-field character's jump height. This is what will enable all characters to use plunge attacks. Using a plunge will consume one stack, which then leads to her burst dealing animal damage upon impact. Plunge attacks in general deals a lot of damage because of the insanely high multipliers, so if you ever use Zhao before, for. It's in a similar playstyle, but now you can use different DPS characters, therefore creating new combinations. An example of this would be a Hu Tao Vape team using a combination of charge and plunge attacks. This is amazing for C0 Hu Taos, where you'll jump cancel to begin with, so now it's adding in an extra high damaging attack into her combos. Now, keep in mind, plunge attacks are a bit slower compared to NAs or CAs. But the great thing is, any DPS can now deal plunge damage. Farina is going to be one of the best allies for Xi'an Yun since her consistent team-wide healing from her burst can help Farina's fanfare. Again, this opens up for more team comps, as not only will you have two damage supporters now, now you have an off-field hydro unit to help with your reactions. This is what makes Xi'an Yun quite interesting is that you can mix and match different units. Her passives also provides further plunge buffs. As mentioned before, her skill is used to activate one of her passives. When Drift Cloud from her E skill hits an enemy, it'll provide one stacked, which will increase plunge crit rate depending on how many stacks you generated, maxes for stacks, and will provide up to 10% crit rate. It's one stack per enemy hit, so try to hit four enemies at once for maximum effect. It's an overall mid ability, which becomes worse when facing single target bosses as the crit rate buff is very low. Her other passive offers a flat damage boost towards plunge attacks when her burst is active. There's a limit to the buff, and boosted damage can only apply to one target. It's only a single enemy that receives bonus damage, up to 8 times for each individual plunge attack. This is where her two passives are somewhat conflicting. A1 is best suited in AoE situations, but A4 is most ideal in single target battles. Xian Yun is quite flexible in terms of artifacts. Her Destin always remains a strong option for animal supports, but Nobilis and even the new Song of Days healing artifacts are beneficial. Building her is also quite simple as well, as the two main stats you should prioritize are ER and attack. Now, Xian Yun is obviously meant for plunge attacks, but she she does offer a consistent team-wide healing, meaning you can use her as a general healer combined with a supportive artifact set. Now this does not mean she replaces Jean. So pulling for Shan Yun has to depend on whether you like the plunge playstyle or not. She's meant for that role, so we should treat it as such. If you do like that unique playstyle, then Shan Yun is a great support which can lead into impressive team damage. Nahida by far has the best Dendro application in the game. Because of this, most players will either use her as an off-field enabler or an on-field driver since you'll naturally stack EM artifacts on her. As you know, her elemental skill has a tap and hold button. Holding it lets you mark up to 8 enemies, making her quite useful when fighting groups of enemies. Enemies who are marked are linked together and will get hit by her Tri Karma whenever you trigger a reaction on them, or if they're hit by Dendro Cores, which includes Hyper Bloom and Burgeon. Tri Karma is Nahida's main source of damage and is further strengthened by her A4 passive. You basically want to increase her Elemental Mastery stats because for every EM point above 200, will increase damage by 0.1% and crit rate by 0.03% for her Tri Karma attack. To maximize her A4 passive, you will need 1000 EM, giving you 80% bonus damage and 24% crit rates which is her skill's limit. The general rule is to aim for a minimum of 800 EM, but this honestly depends on what you want her to do. Now what makes her elemental skill amazing is that the ability has 100% uptime. It lasts for 25 seconds and has a 6 second cooldown. This means enemies who are marked will always have dendro status on them as long as you trigger reactions or reapply the skill when necessary. 
Trikarma triggers every 2.5 seconds with no ICD, but the interval can decrease thanks to her burst. Nahida's elemental burst changes in effect based on what elements you have on your team. Pyro buffs her Trikarma damage, Electro decreases the Karma's interval, which allows her skill to trigger faster, and Hydro increases the burst duration. Having two of the same elements will increase the buff. Her elemental burst goes hand in hand with her A1. The passive skill will increase the on-field character's elemental mastery stats by 25% based on whoever has the highest EM stats within the team. This means if Nahida does not have the highest EM, but let's say Shinobu does, then the scaling will be based on Shinobu, not Nahida. Max buff is 250, and this can apply to Nahida herself if she's on the field, which is another reason why she can be a strong driver. The biggest weakness for Nahida is that she's forced to be on field to mark enemies with her skill in order to apply the Dendro. This becomes a hassle against multiple wave battles where after a group of enemies are wiped out, you'll need to switch back to Nahida, therefore affecting potential rotations. So in comparison to DMC for example, where he drops a plant that can infuse Dendro to all enemies, even new ones as long as they enter the AoE, even Baiju's Dendro attacks follows your characters around and will infuse the element until his burst ends. But all Dendro characters has their pros and cons, strengths and weaknesses, DMC and Baiju relies heavily on their burst, while Nahida does not. Not to mention, Dendro application is far more powerful and consistent on Nahida. If you really want to wreck enemies, get her at C2 if you can. Dendro type reactions like burn and different bloom reactions can potentially crit. Only a 20% chance to crit with 100% crit damage, but this will increase damage overall by a lot. Quicken spread and aggravate will debuff enemies defense by 30%, so if you got the money, 100% would recommend C2 Nahida. Zhao is a character we're all familiar with. He's an animal hypercarrier who relies on his elemental burst. You'll build a team that primarily focuses on increasing his own personal damage. Though not required, you'll usually have a shielder to protect him. One of the benefits for having Zhao is that artifact farming is relatively easy. Even with a standard 2 and 2 for animal and attack bonus, his damage is still quite strong. The Hunter set also works extremely well. His plunge damage won't benefit from the two-piece bonus, but since he naturally loses HP while in his burst state, it'll build his crit rate stats, which offers flexibility when building him. A major issue you'll experience will be energy. You'll more than likely need a second animal character who can funnel particles to him. Not only that, you'll need a balance of high damage stats like attack percentage and crits, along with ER because you'll need his burst ready every rotations. I would recommend around 130 to 140% ER. The Vermilion set would be his best artifacts, although farming for it may not be worth spending all that time and resources. In terms of team members, you have several options, but a C6 Faruzan can truly excel his potential and is by far his best support. She offers insanely high damage buffs, slight CC, and helps with energy. Bennett is an obvious choice, and of course Farina, although depending on the team, you may not be able to max out the fanfare points, and Zhao will have dangerously low HP, since both his and Farina's ability will drain his HP. Nonetheless, he can deal significant AoE damage, and since you're constantly leaping up into the air, he can avoid some damage. His enemy stagger will also come in handy, and he's a very simple character to use. Key thing to remember, Plunge has three types of damage. Two of them are high and low plunge, and the former having higher multipliers, so you want Zhao to use his high plunge attack, meaning jump a little higher before attacking. The third one is called Collision Plunge, in which his spear hits enemies directly before impacting the ground. This way, you'll deal two types of damage with just one move. So even though Zhao is strong in AoE situations, because of the extra collision damage that you're dealing, he's also great in single target battles as well. Now, if you are facing a single target, for optimal damage, use the Jet Combo. This consists of one normal attack, followed by a charge attack, then immediately jump cancel, and end with a plunge attack. Now another major weakness for Zhao is that his plunge attack does push enemies away. Overall, Zhao is a heavy hitter and if you like seeing big animal numbers, then you'll definitely like this character. Now, his teams will make or break the character. He requires strong supports for his hyper carry role. So if you don't have at least two of the high tier supports, then his damage will be a lot less. Now, I'm not saying you can't use other supports, it's just having these top tier supports will excel him further. This is because his team doesn't specialize in reactions for damage, but instead relies on his personal damage. 
Yeah, Miko is one of the best electro enablers in the game. She has 100% electro application uptime. The totems have a duration of 14 seconds and it takes only 4 seconds to refresh one charge. This means you'll always have lightning bolts hitting enemies. Little comparison with Fischl, Oz does have a slight cooldown issue if her burst isn't ready right after her skill ends. So Miko doesn't have this cooldown problem, but if enemies move far out of range, you'll have to reapply the totems one by one again. Miko's burst is also quite powerful, depending on your build. As a Catalyst user, her normal attack still is Electro, so she can be used as an on-field attacker. Now, she does have some problems. Her burst attack, of course, requires energy. Guess what she sucks at? That's right, energy recharge. If you want her to burst every rotation, you'll have to balance ER stats on top of crits and attack. Opting to burst every other rotation can remove the high ER requirements for her. Of course, there's pros and cons to this. Bursting every other rotation means you are losing out on overall team damage, but it gives more flexibility when building her. Another issue is Miko taking the time to place each individual totems. Unlike a lot of sub DPS characters where you just tap the skill and swap out, Miko will require a little bit more field time. It's not that long, but the problem comes when she gets knocked back while placing them. Finally, Miko cannot snapshot, so if you're using Bennett for example, her placement is important. So generally, you'll use Yai Miko for her skill to trigger elemental reactions. The most notable one would be Denjo reactions for spread or aggravate, but Electro Charge is also popular. Her A4 can increase the skill's damage further with EM stats, giving you extra bonus off those EM substats. For constellations, C2 is a good stopping point. C1 does help with energy, but C2 will further strengthen and improve her skill by increasing its max level to 4, so more damage, and it'll increase its range. So who should you pull for on the 4.4 banners? First priority is 100% Nahida. She's still one of the most used characters in Abyss. Dendro remains a dominant reaction in the game, and she's one of the best supports for the element. She offers consistent Dendro application and damage, EM buff which further benefits the reaction, and as a Catalyst user that utilizes crit stats, she can be used as an on-field driver. If you don't have her yet, I'd highly recommend you prioritizing her. Next would be Yai Mika, who is another highly used character on the this. This is thanks to her off-field electro enabling. On top of that, she has good damage and is very simple to use. She synergizes well with top tier teams, most being Dendro or Hydro related. Her main issue comes from the extended rotation times when placing each individual totems, especially when using her burst, which forces you to replace those missing totems. Xian Yun is not a universal support unit. She does have general healing, but it's not worth spending over $200 worth of primogens just for healing. She enables a unique plunge playstyle. This opens up to many different team comps which can lead to high damage that can certainly clear Abyss. Now if you hate plunge, then obviously skip her. You should pull only if you're okay with that style. But she allows forgotten characters like D Luke or characters with high plunge multipliers to deal amazing damage. On top of that, she can support plunge units like Xiao and though not required, she can also support the new 4 star gaming as well. Now if you hate plunge attacks, then you definitely need to skip Xiao. Joking aside, Xiao is a unit where a strong team needs to be built around him, while Xian Yun is a unit that enables an entire team. If you have a C6 Farazan and a Farina or Bennett, Xiao can deal massive amounts of damage, even more so with Xian Yun as she's a support for Xiao, increasing his damage and healing him. Unfortunately, Xiao has remained a low usage character for Abyss, as a DPS character, there are far many others who can outshine Zhao. But comment down below to let me know which character you're pulling for on the 4.4 banners. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for future Genshin Impact and Star Rail videos. I wish you the best of luck everyone, till next time.